So we've covered how to create a parallel edge using both the bandsaw and the joiner. Um, another way to cut a parallel edge, particularly with curves that are S-curves, uh, that don't lend themselves very well to, to rolling on the machine bed, uh, will be to use the planer. So I, I'm deliberately staying away from the main shop planers, which have steel in-feed and out-feed rollers. Uh, particularly that in-feed roller is really aggressive because it's actually toothed. Uh, so if I send this through uh, the, sh the main industrial planers in the shop, uh, it's just going to go through exactly how I originally orient it. Um, maybe it might twist during the cut slightly, but I pretty much have no control on how it gets fed through. Uh, these little DeWalt planers, uh, of which I believe we have two in the shop, have rubber rollers, in-feed and out-feed rollers. So they're actually a lot easier to manipulate. So I'm gonna send this through uh, into the planer like this. And then as the planer is cutting the piece, I'm gonna grab this outer end and I'm gonna start twisting the curve through the planer so that it continues to cut with the grain of the wood. There's minimal tear out. Uh, and then I wanna let it go at this point going to be fed all the way through. Uh, depending on how sharp your S-curve is, might determine um, just how ex extreme you can be uh, in terms of avoiding uh, getting tear out along the fibers of, on, on the top of your lamination. Uh, the main restriction for this particular method is going to be the height versus the thickness of your lamination. So I would say the tallest ratio would be a one to three ratio, meaning the thickness of this lamination is about a half inch. So I definitely not plane any thicker than an inch and a half in width, if that makes sense. Uh, I just don't wanna risk this accidentally tipping over in the planer and potentially getting fed into the cutter head, uh, into the dust collection system and breaking a bunch of those carbide teeth. Um, so I'm gonna turn my planer on now and show you how I'll feed it through. Okay, so you could see um, I was able to feed it through with a fair amount of control. Um, I wasn't able to bend it perfectly perpendicular to the cutter head, but for the most part, I have very minimal um, uh, fiber tear out along the top of my lamination. Uh, and then I usually don't use this method. I usually prefer to use the table saw or the, or the uh, band saw if possible, uh, but this is a really great way, particularly if you're doing square stock laminations, to quickly get a parallel surface right off of the joiner. Uh, so just keep that in mind as an option.